Okay, so here we are again on the remote machine. As you can see, I've just logged into the Linux from scratch with the um, 2.6.22.5 kernel, which has been built for the Pentium 4. And that's just it, just, it's just as it is, um, as you saw being booted. So what we've got to do, first of all, is to put the machine back to how it was so that we can enter Troot. So the first thing I'll do is to mount dev sda9, if you remember that's our partition we're building for, or building on, mount that at LFS. So if we now look at LFS, it should be recognizable. There's the directory we developed the 2.6, uh, or not developed, rather compiled the 2.6 version of the kernel for the Pentium 4. And that's actually yesterday's date, so that confirms that that is the right partition. So what I need to do next is to jump to the part about preparing the virtual kernel file systems and mount them as we did before. And now I can go back and find, yeah, this is the true. I'm going to copy and paste this because there were several used yesterday. There was the one where we were building, there was one where we stripped, and then there's this final one. Um, rather than take a chance and get the wrong one, I'll copy and paste that to ensure that it is the correct one. So that's us back in to the system so we can carry on with the remainder of the build, which is just configuration and building the kernel. So the first thing we've got to do is to um, add in the Linux and Scratch boot scripts, which have been created for us. So LFS boot scripts, and all we'll do with them is make install. Okay, and how do they work? So there's some stuff about UDEV devices, so we might need to read that if that's important to you. So next we're going to do the set clock script. So the machine is set to UTC, so I'll leave that as a one. Configuring the Linux console, so I normally just copy this and then edit it. To have the correct parameters. So this for me would be UK. Uh, And oh, I can never remember these settings. Oh, I haven't made a note of them, unfortunately. Um, it is lat one dash sixteen m eight five nine one. That should be right. Okay, so that's good. Um, one other thing I add in here is to add in the log level and set that to three so there's not too many messages coming up on the screen from the kernel. Uh, that I think that just reduces it down a level. I think the default's four, um, which is roughly halfway as it says it's from one to eight. Oh, it says the default is seven. Okay, so putting it down to three. I think just means that um, emergency and errors are printed out. As I remember, I can't remember the exact um, levels, but three is sufficient to see anything that it uh, will be concerning. Now we do the sysk log d script. Oh, sorry, that no, it's talking about um, how often it updates that, so we don't need to. Modify that, leave it as a default. 
input RC. So find the locale. So this you might already know it if you've done this regularly. So these are all the locales that we've added when we built glibc. So put this command in. Put in the locale you want to use. So I want to use that one there, and it responds with the char map. And we use that to modify this. So that will be ENGB, which is the country and language, followed by a full stop, followed by the response here. And then copy the rest. Local net script, so the host name. So I'll use LFS dash six underscore three and I'll have to remember that because I need to use it elsewhere. For example here, so I'm going to be using the network card version. So I'll paste that in and then edit it again. And I want this to be zero. Oops, what's happened there? Zero forty four, and the host name is LFS dash six underscore three dot mynet dot org, and the first alias is just the host name on its own, and there are no other aliases. Well, in theory, I could put in P4-3000 because that's what it's known by on my uh, name server. Um, so that's that. <clears throat> Um, let's have a look at this. So this is just about um, handling CD-ROM devices. So let's try running this. There's two CD devices connected to this machine. One doesn't work properly, which is why there's two. Um, Look at lines contain the various output of the star ID programs. I was looking at something called block HDD, so I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's just somewhere it looks at standard and it's just not there anyway. Um, but I don't think we need to bother with that anyway, so um, Yeah, we're not going to be using CDs if, uh, when to do the next uh, Linux from scratch, it'll just be booting from this as I've been doing all the time, so it's not a great deal to worry about um, You do it's not persistent across reboots by default because the drivers are loaded in parallel and thus in random order, for example. Okay, so this is about similar sort of situation with network cards being swapped around at boot time. Um, and we can get consistent names by running this script. Can't read. Oh, right, okay, so it's saying this one didn't um, come up. So it's just telling us that ETH0 is going to be the network device. So what we need to do is to... Copy 
copy this. And edit it. And we want to modify that directory and that file. And I need to change this to my IP address, which is 0 0.44, gateway is 0 0.1. And that's the broadcast address. So that should be fine. Resolve.conf. So my domain is mynet.org and That's my name server. I'll just use the one. And I think this is the first time that the resolve.conf has actually been included in the instructions as far as I can remember. So etc fs tab, let's copy this in now and edit that. Right, so what we want here is to have dev sda9 as the root it's got a type of file system for ext3 and we'd leave the remainder as it is then I'll insert a line for dev sda2 uh, which is the boot partition and that's got an ext2 file system and I don't want that to be mounted automatically but I'll accept all the defaults and I'll set these to 1 and 2 and then finally the swap partition is sda3 oh I've turned on the swap mode uh, uh, sorry, in the replacement mode. So SDA3 is the swap, and that stays the same, that stays the same. We've got a proc file system, sysfs, devpts, and shm. So that should be sufficient.